Welcome back to the Belted Galloway Homestead. Hey, I'm getting a lot of views on my toe behind DR trimmer mower. So I thought I would uh, do a video on the first trimmer mower that I bought. And it's actually a push uh, trimmer mower. And it's got the big wheels on it. And uh, when I bought the Homestead, um, you know, the, the grass is growing, the brush is growing, and you've got to find a way to to handle it so I thought this was going to be the answer to all my problems uh, it's a big trimmer and uh, it also has this what they call a beaver blade and um, this is the 14 inch uh, version of the beaver blade and it's basically a chainsaw uh, chain around a disc that goes in the place of the uh, string trimmer and uh, you can cut up to like 3 inch uh, saplings 3 inch trees brush and that and uh, I'll show you how that works. Um, I see now they only have like a 12 inch version you can buy new. So I don't know if you've got something like this interest you. This is a, uh, this is a commercial unit. And um, if you can get your hands on one, it's got a lot of power. Um, again, it's got a lot of, a uh, lot of, a lot of options on it. That's nice. It's got a uh, sight glass. For the fuel to let you know how high the fuel is it's got an easy access shut off to the uh, fuel you can uh, turn the fuel on and off it's got a uh, oil filter for uh, cleaning keeping the oil clean in the engine that's you know that's that's incredible uh, on a small you know small engine like this it's a, a 6.75 horsepower um, see I'm not focusing right um, commercial trimmer mower uh, electric start there's the, the key switch and the battery and over here is the the starter right there so it's electric start and what else um, a lot of power got four strings on it it also has this deal in it that you can kick the tire kick the kick the axle over so you you pull this lever here and you you shift the axle forward so as you can see the wheels are aligned straight with the trimmer but you can take that axle and you can kick that trimmer head over by shuttling this this side of the axle and you can walk down say a fence row or a building and that'll be over so let me get that kicked over and i'll show you I'll show you how this ends up coming over this way. All right, so I've got that axle. It's kicked. So the mower is still sitting where it was at, but the axle now is different. So when you're running this, you're going to be running it like straight ahead. And that, that mower head is over here now. And the strings are beyond the wheel. It's got a brake on it, so it's hard to turn. But you can see that string now is beyond the wheel, so you're able to trim right up against a building and that. So um, I end up putting a uh, a PVC pipe here to hold the hold the replacement strings when you're out trimming. You don't want to have to run back to get those. Uh, pretty nice unit. It's got some got some drawbacks, which I'll get into, but uh, a lot of power. And it might be the answer for you if uh, you don't mind pushing a trimmer mower as opposed to carrying around a, a weed whacker or a heavy-duty string trimmer. You can even put a, a saw blade on some of those string trimmers on there. So, like I said, real nice unit. Not sure if they make it anymore. I think they make a version of it. and uh, But I still see them for sale out there, so you can get your hands on it and on there. But... Um, a lot of nice options on this one with it being a commercial grade to keep it running keep the keep the oil clean and uh, just a robust unit
Here's the belties. Coming to check out my trim job. How the DR trimmer goes. Huh? Did it work? Yeah. I got a little bit more to trim, don't I? Uh-huh. Boy, the flight control is working really good. They are doing really good this summer. Well, thanks for coming up and seeing me. Yeah. So as you can see, the uh, 6.75 horsepower uh, engine has a lot of power for the string trimmer. In fact, it is a it is a beast of an engine on there. Uh, the unit is a little heavy. Like I said, this one's not self-propelled. It is uh, push. So you're pushing, you're pulling, you're pushing, you're pulling. Um, after you've done that a while, uh, you know, it's a heavy unit, even with the big wheels. So as long as you don't mind uh, the pushing and the pulling, I think even think a self-propelled would just be propelled going forward. I've never ran one, so I don't know how that would be, because a lot of times when you're trimming, you know, you're pushing under a tree, you're pulling back, you're, you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of pulling and pushing. Uh, as opposed to just walking down a fence line or walking down a building. So, um, but even though it's got big wheels on it, uh, it, it does get heavy after a while. Uh, and you know you've pushed this thing and pulled it uh, quite a bit when you're out there trimming. But um, it doesn't lack the power. It's just, uh, it's just a little heavy uh, to be uh, pushed around, especially if you don't have, um, if you don't have smooth, flat um, ground. Uh, you're going over some bumps and lumps and ruts and that it can be a little uh, it can be a little rough You can adjust that bar down, you know, so you can push on it more Then you find you know, you're having to push on that, but you're also having to having to kind of keep the ball off the ground Otherwise, it's gonna it's gonna spin there on the ground Which uh, it's made to do that the ball on the bottom of the where the string trimmer is but um, Yeah, you can see it's got got plenty of power so Let's get that beaver blade mounted on there and I'll show you how that works. Uh, that was another really good reason why I bought this um, is to keep up with the brush here on the homestead. So let me get that mounted and I'll be back. So let me show you the string set up here while I've got it off. You can see it's got multiple layers here and that's to control the height. So technically this can ride on the ground and then whatever height you want to trim your weeds at, you can put the strings in in these different levels to trim up higher, trim up lower. I liked it about that, that, that height there. So, and this string is different from the, the toe behind. Toe behind you put in four strings and they kind of had like a locking jaws to lock it in there. This one's a longer string and you feed it through and then you loop it over these tabs. So you technically only have two strings in this, in this head unit, but you end up having the four longer ends coming out. So you have to cut your string a different length between the two if you get a roll of it. So just thought I'd show you how you control the different height there on the string trimmer. But let's see what this beaver blade can do.
Now that's not a three inch sapling, of course, but it's certainly something you couldn't trim with a string trimmer. So you're able to reach underneath these pine trees and trim these, uh, trim these sprouts coming out. Let me go see if I can find something bigger. Well, this beaver blade is actually pretty dull. One of the drawbacks here in Minnesota with this beaver blade, at least for me here on the, on the homestead, is I've got rocks um, throughout all this. So you reach in there, you know, you're not sure if there's a rock in there or, or what might be in that brush, you know, and you're going in there with the beaver blade to trim these... Um, the trim these small saplings and uh you hit rocks and man you hit a rock with that like a chainsaw and it just dulls your your blade so i found i was constantly having to keep up with that and uh and then you'd have it sharpened and then you'd be out there trimming in the in the woods or on a fence row or something like that and then you'd end up hitting uh hitting a rock mostly Maybe a piece of metal from a fence or or, uh, or a piece of metal post or something that somebody threw out there previously. But the worst for me was rocks. So I found that it didn't, uh, it didn't really work well for me because uh, I had to keep up with sharpening it so much. And it seemed like after I sharpened it, I used a little bit and I'd hit another rock again. And man, you hit a rock and it just takes the edge right off these, uh, these chainsaw blades. But uh, other than that, you get the idea. It... Uh, that's a little bigger than uh, than three inch, um, but uh, but it, it can cut it if it was sharp. It'll cut right through it and, and that. So I just wanted to give you a demonstration here, but you'll be the judge of that if that's going to be value to you or not to have one of these um, beaver blades. One good thing about owning a homestead is that you don't need a, uh, a uh, membership to a, an exercise club. You got plenty of that around here, keeping the belties happy and also keeping up on the homestead and uh, keeping it in good shape and clean. So I kind of look at it that it's, a, it's also exercise, good exercise to get out and keep the, keep the homestead clean. But uh, there you go on the DR trimmer mower, a uh, push behind, got a lot of power. Uh, it's got a, uh, a beaver blade on it for cutting saplings and that. Um, I appreciate you, uh, watching the videos. Thank you much. This YouTube channel is a lot of fun to make, to, uh, share my love of the Belties. And then also, uh, the ideas on the homestead. I'm getting some great comments and some great ideas for future videos. Please keep them coming. Uh, also, you know, give me some likes. Uh, if you like what you see, let me know. Also subscribe. Please, please subscribe to the channel. I'm getting some great growth. I want to keep that going. So uh, please subscribe. Let me know what you think. As I said, it's a lot of fun making these. And uh, I want to keep making them in the future.